welcome. My name is Guy Gaylor, and this is the third in the series on debris. In this tutorial, we will go over how to use particle flow to create bullet holes, crack glass, and explosions. However, this will be done by cheating and using animated bitmaps. For certain types of scenes, this is a major time saver and can produce results that would be too difficult to achieve using real geometry. In this tutorial, we'll go over how to create a simple particle flow system that shoots many particles at a wall, use animated bitmaps to create cracks and bullet holes, use a camera map to create animated bitmaps to be reused in the object's material, and then I'll do a quick walkthrough of lots of planes dropping bombs. At the end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding on how to use animated bitmaps to en enhance your action scenes. So I open up a sample scene, and the sample scene is very simple. It has just a simple plane that is uh, going to be our wall. And then I also created a, a plane here, too, that's going to be used for, for our uh, bullet holes and glass. So what we want to do is we want to create a particle flow system that's going to be shooting a bunch of bullets into this wall. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and just create our particle system. And I'm going to create it about the size of the wall itself. And I'll move it back this way. So now if we just scrub through this, we have a bunch of particles flying into this wall. So what we want to do is we want to have uh, a collision take place when it hits this wall and replace this particle with a bullet hole object or in uh, broken glass. So what I'm going to do is we'll need to create a, a collision here on the wall. So I'll go ahead and create our deflector now and pick our wall. And let's go ahead and open up particle flow and adjust this. So for this, I don't need the rotation speeds fine. And for now, I'm going to get rid of the um, shape also for the bullets. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a collision object. I'm going to select that U deflector. So when the particles now hit the wall, they're going to be bouncing back, which is not what we want it to do. But we do want the collision to be taking place, and that's good. We're going to go ahead and create a spawn object. So the collision is going to go into the spawn, and the spawn object is going to create one particle for the particle that hits it, and it's going to delete the parent. So we're going to be starting a brand new particle after it hits that wall. Now right now we're getting the same behavior where it's just hitting off the wall and bouncing back. Let's go ahead and create a shape instance for this spawn particle and connect that. And the shape instance is going to be our little plane here. So I'll go ahead and click that. And let's turn on the geometry so we can see what it looks like. And right now we have the particles are hitting the wall and then it's bouncing back as this plane. So in order to stop that from occurring, we can go ahead and just add in a speed and set the speed to zero. So now the particles are going to be hitting the wall and just stopping and they're facing the wrong direction. And we can correct that by adding in a rotate. And uh, right now with the random, they're all over the place. Let's go ahead and put it into the world space and change the, the X to 90 degrees. And now we have it being flat planes right against the wall. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and add in an animated material. So I'm going to add in the the dynamic and you, you see that we have a dynamic and we have a static. Uh, the static would be anytime you're adding in a map that isn't animated. The dynamic is for the animation and we do have one here that's this bullet spark. And let me show you just really quickly what that looks like. So I'll open this up. And so it's a very simple animation. We have a spark, we have a bullet hole, and we have just a little puff of smoke. 
So if we go ahead and just copy that as an instance over to there, we now have, I'll zoom in. So as we scroll through this, as the particles hit, it's leaving the little bullet holes. And let's go ahead and just render And we got a lot of bullet holes and little sparks and things like that. So one of the things that could be messed up if you try doing this is one of the things that you have to do in order to make the particles actually synced correctly is when you put your map in, you have to change the time attribute here to sync frames to particle age. So if this is not checked, what happens is if we go ahead and just render a quick view, all the, pull, the bullet holes are actually animated to the same uh, animation uh, consistently across. So there is no uh, resetting every time it hits the wall. So you basically have all the particles following the same uh, animation motion, which is not what you want. But that can be easily handled by just simply checking in this sync frames to particle age. And now it, it tells it to go ahead and start the animation for each particle when it hits the surface. So the other thing that's kind of uh, nice that you can do by doing it this way is you have a, uh, an image map that's doing your bullet hole here. You can also create another spawn object that would be shooting out a little bit of debris from the wall whenever the bullets hit. And I'm not going to go through it, but what you could just do is you could just add in another spawn target here. Now this one needs to be above the other one because the other one deletes the particle and if it's below it actually deletes before it does anything. And if we create it just a simple shape over here and connected it, whenever the particles hit, let's go to a view we can actually see it, you're going to get particles coming back. So let's go ahead and add, make it 10 particles and let's make this something uh, that we can see a little better. So you can see on this side is now when it's hitting it's blowing back these particles and of course you don't want them shooting out this far but if you follow what we went over in the other tutorials you can quickly go ahead and put in some gravity and drag and uh, a collision object on the ground so it bounces. And at the end of this, I'll show you an example of just that. 